I think it'll be a good conversation really early on, especially if you guys start dating. It's like, okay, I want to know what are you comfortable with as far as intimacy or, or affection. I think the Bible teaches, like, it says not to be a, a stumbling block to your brother or sister. Mm -hmm. If you feel uncomfortable in a situation, you feel like you're about to do something that you don't want to do, that person, if they care about you, yeah. are, are going to yeah. respect that. I want you to feel comfortable with me. So if this makes you feel uncomfortable, we can do something different. I didn't want to kiss. Um, I really was saying I didn't want to kiss until we get married. When we first started dating for the first uh, month or two, we didn't kiss. Right. And, um, um, but what would happen was <laughs> one of these, like here, I just have to demonstrate it. <clears throat> okay, so we'd be sitting, you know, like this in like a public park or something, and we just get like this, and it's like, okay, anything but kiss, anything but kiss, and it's just, you know, that's, it is just like, okay, and he kissed me right here on the, after a while, it was the very corner of my lip, you know? And so, uh, we tried really hard. We put forth a fantastic effort on the no on kissing, the kissing part. We eventually did kiss and yeah. it did and hinder our uh, pursuit of purity. Although we did not, like I said, we did not have sex, but um, it made it much more difficult for sure. Yeah. It's okay to kiss. I think it's um, th there. There has to be some sort of boundaries because you don't want to be any like just you know having no sense of affections toward each other whatsoever. Yeah. You know, we can't touch. I can't even hold your hand type thing because yeah. it's natural and it's okay. It's just that you have to have boundaries. You don't need to beat yourself up if you do go you know cross the line. You gotta forgive yourself. You know God's grace is sufficient and just learn from it. Learn from it so that you can do better next time mm -hmm. and then help somebody else do better next time. I will say we were probably fine until we started visiting each other's that's true. That's true. Because we spent, I know for the beginning of our dating as well, I didn't really let him come over to my place and I didn't go over his place. And if he came over, it was for a very quick second for us to like meet and leave. So I think honestly, that was where it kind of got risky because we always, we would just to keep ourselves from going to each other's homes. One of our first dates, we sat in the car to like 2 a.m. in the parking lot, 4 a.m. in the parking lot. And then our, our next date, we literally stayed in the car, I kid you not, till 8 a.m. the next morning. We probably would still be sitting there if I had I not had a nine o'clock appointment to go somewhere. <laughs> but that was how hard we were trying to not go over to each other's house. We're like, we'd rather spend the night in the car talking. In a random parking lot. In a random parking lot, which is very dangerous. I don't recommend that necessarily. Yeah, I didn't get no sleep that night. Nah, nah, neither did I. I have no doubt we functioned the rest of the and day. But, uh, yeah, you, you were snoring. I was snoring? I fell asleep? Yes. Oh. You were, you were sleeping Maybe. on top of me. Ew. You were super good. I was squished <laughs> in an uncomfortable position. I'm sorry. <laughs> All night. <laughs> Just the, the passion that we had for each other yeah, was really, I didn't anticipate that. really, really strong. Yeah, I, um, I had never experienced that before. Really. Like it was almost immediately as soon as we we like our first date, we were really like already pretty passionate for each other already, which yeah. was kind of scary because I'm like, okay, I've seen this story before. I get really you know hyped up for a girl and and, and the bad, so I'm trying to restrain myself from getting too passionate. But yeah, it's just that passion always stayed consistent even to this to this day. We're just very passionate to you, for each other. We just love each other very much. Yeah. It wasn't even like, like a lustful. A, yeah, right. It, it wasn't, wasn't a lustful, lustful um, passion. passion. It was just like I want drawn you, to right, you. Um, like something. you're, I, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever really truly been in love before uh, until meeting you, actually. Yeah. So. Both of us were uh, already on the same. We both have have the same vision, so that makes it a lot easier. And we both generally want to please God in our in our individual lives. So I think that's uh, that's what really was the true motivation is that we both wanted to be pure for God. Right. You know, right. and that's like the the true true motivation behind us being pure 
is that ultimately we want to be pure for God. If you do it for God, I mean, it's a lot easier, I think, to, like something about signing that purity pledge made me feel more like I was like talking, like it was something about that that made me feel more accountable to, to God on, with that for some reason. And I think that then I felt like, okay, I don't really want to disappoint myself, Moses, or God. It's, it's, it's gonna take a team effort to, to keep you guys pure through your relationship. Um, and if it leads to you guys getting married, you guys are gonna be very, very appreciative of that. But if it doesn't lead to that, you're also gonna be appreciative of that because right. you didn't cross that line to where now you guys have more more baggage to go through yeah. than than, it, than just the relationship just not working out. Right. Um, so it's it's beneficial on, in both ways. Signing a purity pledge. Signing a purity pledge really set some fantastic boundaries. I yep. think there's something about signing a contract yep. that just and makes you, you... And you have witnesses. And witnesses that that saw us sign yep. it. Um, and, and we never broke it. We did not. Not not one time. And that really did feel very good because it was something we had been struggling to do our entire relationship. And I was so happy that we did it prior to getting married. Because it was a relief. It's, it's just like we've been saying that we've been doing we, we, we trying to do this, we're trying to do this, and we never do it. Like I was getting tired of it. Like, man, like we got to stop. Again, all these things happen a little late, but for those who are just getting started in yeah. relationships, find like, a purity do, pledge. Find somebody. Somebody, I know you have somebody in your life. Mm -hmm. that will be willing to witness a purity pledge yeah frame it in your in, in both of y'all's apartments mm -hmm. you know and have those witnesses there and stick to it and we're yeah. pretty uh pretty um faithful to keep our commitments it's especially if it's something signed you know yeah. i think something signed it just changes your mind it's like i, I signed it so it's I need physical to so you can see it yep it's not just like it's not just a, a proclamation. Now, if you, you just, just have a, a bad, you know, reputation of just not keeping your commitment, <laughs> then maybe a period <laughs> place won't help, help you at all because you just have, a, you know, you just don't keep. Commitment. But you can't break an actual contract, you know. You can't. Is that breach a contract? Is that what that means? It's yeah, a yeah, a contract. breach a contract. But yeah, but if you but have like a, a history of breaking contracts, like you, you know, let's say you got a lease, a lease, and you break that, and then you got a car lease, you broke that, you can stop it. I'm not coming for people. I'm just saying, okay. if you have a history of that, maybe a purity place won't help. <laughs> you, don't, it, you don't really take it seriously. I mean, seriously. you're not wrong. I'm just saying. <laughs> just don't take it seriously. Oh, man. So. All right, next question. <laughs> There is no such thing as bad sex. I agree. God created sex. So it's good. If you love the person, it's, the sex is going to be good because I, I think for for especially us and just the society that we live in, it's just sex is over glorified, yeah. you know, and, and, and it like broken down into like so many layers. Like it's pretty simple. As long as you love the person, you listen and you want to please them, yeah. you're going to, you know, learn and yeah. you're, gonna, you're going to enjoy it. And I, I, I really, I really truly believe that. I don't have to have sex with a bunch of women to know that. I just mm -hmm. know that because first I believe God, God created something that's good, it's pleasurable, you know, and I just love my wife. And I know that if I love her I and she loves me, then and we listen to each other, we we learn how to please each other. It was good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it was good. And uh, yeah, it was. Well, for me, it was a different experience because I was losing my virginity. So at first I was like, Okay, uh, I'm gonna get the hang of this <laughs> one of these days. So it took a minute for me to kind of catch up. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was. And honestly, even the first, my first time, and without giving too many, too much information, I guess, it felt like two, being two teenagers without the risk of your mom catching you. I would guess. Like, <laughs> it kind of had the feeling of like, oh my god, like this is okay. It, it did. It did feel like. We actually do this. Now? Yeah, we were legit like, <laughs> okay, we signed a purity pledge. I mean, like, we've we're, been we're struggling married, with this. 
We're married. We've been saying we no, 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 no yes. for so long. Yes. Now we get the yes. I'm like, we're kind of uh, like, for really? Real? Like, like for real, for real, like you're not gonna come after me. We're not going right. We're not gonna, uh, <laughs> like for real. I'm not gonna yeah. feel ashamed. We're in the right hotel. Like, so you wanna? Uh, so I, guess, you, I guess. I guess. Yeah. Me, yeah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Celibacy journey. I wish from the very beginning I was, um, I, you know, I wish I made that that declaration that I'm going to be a virgin until I'm married, you know, but no, I didn't have that type of influence around me to really make that declaration. It was, I had another declaration that was saying, I am no longer a virgin. It was the declaration that every boy and every, uh, you know, everywhere I was getting any sort of uh, male influence. influence it was that you're no longer a virgin it's what you should be shooting for and um and even even when i became a christian like you know a devoted christian started following christ i think only i had sex with one person um after that which i wish i never felt on that level too because I, I think at that time i was really desperate for for someone to be with and um and i went as far as she wanted to go and when she was finished <laughs> to as far as our relationship you know she just left me there um which left me pretty pretty hurt at the time and to to fall into that trap because i didn't have self-control really really did some damage in my heart. I wish, you know, and it, you know, it all taught me lessons, you know what I'm saying? But I think those are things that I wish I could have had self-control, self-awareness, and uh, to to avoid those type of traps. Um, anything as a couple? As a couple, I think just, you know, us, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy we'd never had sex, you know, and that, that that is what I'm, I am happy about. Uh, things I wish I would we'd never have done is just the other stuff we did, um, you know, and stayed, you know, truly pure throughout of our relationship, and not just those last two, you know, three months uh, prior to us getting married. Um, I think that's the only thing I wish we could have done. I wish we would have done from the very beginning. Just make that declaration. Um, find I wish we had known about the had that idea beforehand. <laughs> I would say keep in mind your why. Keep in mind that you're not doing this just, just because God says it's wrong or the Bible says it's wrong. God doesn't say it's wrong anyway. I think your focus has to be right mm -hmm. and making sure you're doing it for the right reason. You're not abstaining just for the sake of torturing yourself. You know, you're not abstaining just to deprive yourself. You know, it's just like the same thing with fasting. You don't you don't fast just for the sake of like losing 30 pounds and, and you're emaciated and malnourished and no one, including God, is getting glory out of it. You fast for a very particular reason um, in a very particular way and it's, it's strategic. You pray the time that you would eat or whatever you're fasting from. Like there's, it's not just doing it for the heck of it. It's the same, I think, with this. It's like. You, your purpose and your reason has to be bigger than yourself. And I think with anything that God asks us to do is because he knows the result of it. We get mad by the consequences. It's like we touch the fire and we get mad that it burned us. I've heard the analogy of fire when it comes to sex and uh, it's like um, fire is, is good when it's in a fireplace, when it's it provides you with warmth. It's great with a stove, it can cook your food. But if you just set fire in the middle of your living room, you will not have a living room for much longer. <laughs> Uh, and, and that is such a great depiction of sex. Marriage is built to handle sex. That's really all that it is. It's like, it's the true just fireplace for a fire, you know? Any, and if it doesn't mm. have, if it doesn't have, that was nice? Yeah, okay. A little fireplace for, to have the fire. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> I didn't realize Because anywhere you put it, it's, it's going to cause damage. Yeah. Hmm. Mmm, hold on now, you felt that? I felt that. You felt that. Yeah, struck your, yeah you struck your beard on that one. Yeah, okay. That all right, all right. Marriage is the fireplace to have the fire. With <laughs> sex. Yes!
it was it was worth it Absolutely. it was so worth it it felt good so worth it i'm glad i crossed the finish line i i am glad that i waited me too i'm glad that i don't have a long list a laundry list of women that i've been with you know because you know what would your advice be to a person who does have a laundry list of people forgive yourself and you know be celibate you know forgive mm -hmm. yourself god's grace is sufficient yeah no matter where you at you know you may have just had sex last night forgive yourself today declare it and make it known to god and make it known to somebody else that you are making a decision right now and it's not going to be easy but you're making the decision that you're not going to continue on this path because if you do you're going to regretting more than you want to sooner than you can make that decision i don't think it's ever better. too late for real for no real. it's never even too if you late. already had sex all that stuff it's never too late yeah, it's never too late. You can still find the joy of waiting. Sure, uh, God commends that anyway. You know? Absolutely. Yep. And you're, and again, you're planting the seed. You're setting up. Yep. You you're setting yep. yourself up for that type of. You're choosing experience to of being. Plant the seed yeah. of, of celibacy. God asks us to deny ourselves, our wants, and carry our cross. Denying ourselves isn't easy. We're carrying the cross to our death. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus did. He was carrying the cross that was going to basically kill him. Mm -hmm. So we have to die on that cross. We're carrying this cross and we die to ourselves, to die to our desires. So we, we need to die every single day. We need to die so that God's desires can actually come out of us instead of ours.